Hey everyone, it's Matt. As I've been reviewing a couple of these Nextbase dash cams, I also had the opportunity to review their uh, rear in-cabin camera, which is an attachment that goes on uh, applicable models like the 322GW, uh, along with some of their other models as well, like the 422 and the 522. What this camera does is it attaches to the side of the camera, and see I'm waving at it here, and it projects back into and records your cabin. So this is actually a great little tool for those of you um, that are doing things like ride hailing and want to view inside your vehicle um, of your passengers while you're driving or uh, want to be able to capture footage. It might be a requirement from your insurance provider or something like that, or maybe even just for your own personal safety. So um, this is basically literally a plug and play attachment. So on the side of your uh, applicable dash cam, there's a little rubber stopper. You pull that stopper out and you plug the camera in and that's literally it. That's all you have to do. And it just kind of does uh, does its thing from there and it just starts automatically recording for you. And it records into a separate video itself from the uh, from what's happening on your front camera while actually um, syncing up with the audio as well. So I'm going to take a quick drive around um, and I'm going to show you some footage. Now, one of the things that I will be showing you shortly is where to mount your camera because it's drastically going to depend on whether or not you're going to buy one of these things. And if you are, then I've got uh, two mounts on my windshield here and I'm going to show you how I made this work. This is where I was really fortunate to get to review two next base dash cams at the same time because I can call this a tale of two different mounting strategies. This was the original base here for the 222 and the 222 is just a front facing dash cam where I didn't have to worry about um, anything uh, anything obstructing back into the cabin view because we weren't actually looking inside my vehicle at that time. However, one of the things that you're gonna run, to, run into is if you put this mount too high or if you're trying to hide it behind the rear view, you're basically going to obstruct the entire view of the cabin view um, camera with the, uh, the rear view mirror here. So my recommendation would be that if you're going to get the uh, cabin view camera, you basically do a mock-up maybe take it so the adhesive is on now but maybe have it without the adhesive and just slide it around with the touch screen on and figure out where you'd actually like to place the camera and from there uh, kind of map it out and then put the put the camera on the mount so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, some footage of what happens if you mount it here with the cabin view camera and then what happens if you mount it here where this is going to be my spot for my 322. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that in and then I'll plug that in and get going. Before continuing on with this footage, let me show you a quick hands-on installation. Yep, this is it. Nothing else required. It'll draw power from the camera itself. You can also move the cabin view camera manually to suit where it'll film inside your car. As for the footage, here's my daughter and I going out for a boring afternoon drive to the electronics recycling depot. You're not missing much in our conversation, trust me. When you plug this camera in, it automatically carries over literally all the settings you've enabled on your front camera with one exception. The cabin view camera films at a maximum 30 frames per second, while the supported cameras can film up to 60 frames per second. You don't have to worry about customizing settings for this device as it'll just sync up with whatever you've set for the camera. In following these settings, it will also record high and low res footage simultaneously so that you can access the latter in the mobile app. Here's a quick low res look at my barely awake self driving for coffee one morning. As you can see, this is a great option for say all of you Uber or Lyft drivers out there looking to keep tabs on things happening inside and outside your vehicle. Here's the thing though, if you are ride hailing and want to use this, I'd recommend possibly getting a hardwire kit for this so you can hide the power cables as much as possible from your customers getting in and out of the vehicle, especially if they're going to be sitting in the front seat. These hardwire kits don't come standard with the cameras, but cost less than a really good memory card, so they aren't that expensive. If you'd like to see the actual cameras these attach to, check this channel for supporting Nextbase dash cam reviews like the 322GW, or check the Best Buy blog for more written reviews. All right, basically what I'm gonna show you now is I'm gonna show you some footage of what's gonna happen if you mount your camera too high. So remember, I have two mounts in the car. I'm going to put this on the higher mount, which is fine from the standpoint of recording out uh, in front of the vehicle, but you're going to see what happens if you put it too high and you start to put it behind things that are going to obstruct your field of view. Um, also important maybe not to put it too much on this, too much on a side uh, because you might be then filming part of what's happening outside the car over on the side. So like I said, 
tinker with it a little bit, figure out where you want to put it, and then take the adhesive off and put it on the car from there. So as you can see, what was the perfect mounting strategy for just the front facing camera it doesn't work so well um, for a cabin view camera. In fact, I don't even know at this point because I can't see, but I'm assuming you can't even see any of my cabin at all and you're just looking at the back of my rear view mirror. Um, so really, it is just about being mindful about whether this is an add-on that you're going to be purchasing in the future or something that you will be um, adding to your setup and making sure that you do mount it in the right spot. If you do mess up, it's not a big deal. Um, this does come with two pieces of adhesive or you can just move it over to the suction cup mount, whichever, whichever one you prefer. One thing I should mention in closing is that this doesn't take the place of a rear view camera. If you're looking for a rear view camera, Nextbase does offer those as well, very similar, clips into the side, uh, but it actually projects farther back out there so that it acts as more of a rear view camera than to capture the action of what's actually happening inside your cabin. Um, once, once, you're, once you're done, once you'd like to view footage, you can go through the My Nextbase Player app or you can take this out, uh, take the micro SD card out, put that into your computer, view your footage there. Uh, and then you also have the option to upload your footage to My Next Base's cloud system. So that's, um, that, that's this whole product in a nutshell. So it's a little optional add-on that you can get for, uh, for your Next Base dash cams. It's really helpful. I mean, the footage here you can see is pretty clear. The audio is pretty clear as well. And this is the Next Base Cabin View Cam, which is now available at Best Buy and online at bestbuy.ca. Um, thanks for viewing. My name is Matt. Make sure you subscribe to this channel because we are going to be looking at a few more Nextbase dash cams along with other dash cams in the future and we can help you pick what you'd like to uh, what you'd like to get for your vehicle. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Okay.